Every prophet objects to their call. I would even go so far as to say every person, each one of us, objects to our own call. And I don't mean the call of those of us who are in rostered ministry alone, those who are ordained, but each of us. Each of us in some way objects to our call as baptized Christians. This is what our call is. To go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Here are our objections. All nations? Are you sure? Because I don't have a passport, at least not a valid one. And I only speak English. Well, I speak a little bit of French and enough German to get me in trouble. And, well, it, it really can't be all nations, can it? And I can't afford to just go off and go around the world and baptize all nations. I've got responsibilities, a mortgage to pay. I can't go and do that. Well, even if I tried to do it only in this nation, uh, not sure I've got enough biblical knowledge for that. My, or at times I doubt, you know, my faith isn't that strong some days. And I don't know if I believe everything that the church teaches on every matter. Baptize? Me? Well, I can do that here in this space. But, but that's somebody else's responsibility elsewhere, isn't it? Often, often when we hear objections to a call by a prophet in a biblical story, though, the objection is based on inadequacy. This about Moses. Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor even now that you have spoken to your servant. But I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Moses objects to God's call because he doesn't speak well. But that isn't the case with Isaiah. There's no hint of inadequacy here. Isaiah's objection is based solely on guilt. This from Isaiah 6, 5. And I said, woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Unclean lips? In other words, I've said things that I shouldn't have said. And I live among people who do that all the time. Isaiah's objection reminds me so much of a much later teaching of Jesus. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. What comes out of us most are words spoken through our lips. Our defiled speech defiles our lips. You'd think that that would be a good objection to God's call. Someone who swears, who takes the name of God in vain, who breaks one of the Ten Commandments. That, that's a clear impediment for being a prophet, right? Not so fast. God doesn't even speak in response to Isaiah's objection. Instead, it's one of the seraphs who speaks. The seraph touched my mouth with the hot coal 
and said, Now that this hot coal has touched your lips, your guilt has been departed, and your sin is blotted out. There's no objection by Isaiah that Isaiah's sin has been blotted out and that his guilt has departed. And if you knew what a seraph looked like, you probably wouldn't object either. This from the Faith Life Study Bible. These heavenly beings, seraphs, attending to God are only mentioned here. Their name is derived from a Hebrew term that indicates some sort of serpent. The related Hebrew verb denotes burning. So the seraphim are sometimes considered fiery serpents. Ancient Egyptian art includes images of winged serpents. These serpents, however, do not have six wings. Imagine for a moment that you're greeted by a fiery winged serpent delivering a message from God. Are you really going to object to that? I know I wouldn't. I'd just be happy to be alive after it was over. No wonder. No wonder then that Isaiah agrees to go on and follow God's call. God offers the same removal of guilt and blotting out of sin to each one of us. It's not just particular to Isaiah, but it is particular to us, to each one of us, our own sins, our own guilt. So then, what is our response? Our response to God blotting out and removing our guilt? Will we continue with the objections that we had before? Or will we echo the words of Isaiah at the end of today's reading? Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And Isaiah said, Here I am, send me. May we each be willing to be sent by God to proclaim the good news to the world. Because God knows the way the world is at the moment, it desperately needs it. May we be the ones to overcome our own objections. May we be the ones who are willing to share God's news with every person we meet. For that calling, we give thanks. Amen.